we're going to look at writing Lewis structures now. Lewis structures are a simple process that will help us to uh, determine a number of properties about the compounds, types of bonds, geometry of the molecule, and whether it's polar or nonpolar. So these are the rules. These will also be posted on the page. Um, so when we do our low structures, we first start off summing all the valence electrons. For each of the atoms present, we have a negative charge, we're adding the number of electrons out of that charge. If we have a positive charge, we're subtracting the number of electrons of that charge. So I like to divide the number of electrons by two to get the number of electron pairs. Electrons prefer to be in pairs. We lay out the atoms as appropriate. Normally, the first element is a central atom. Uh, hydrogen can never be a central atom. And when we only have three atoms, you usually show the layout in the formula. We're going to start off bonding adjacent atoms with a single line that represents a pair of two electrons, a pair of bonding electrons. We add the remaining electrons around the atoms. Um, and we try to satisfy the octet rule of the process. And if we're doing um, electron lone pairs, I prefer to do a pair of dots, and I'll show why later instead of a, a dash for the pair. If we have uh, excess electrons, actually add all the electrons and satisfy the octet rule. This should only happen if we have a period three or higher element as a central atom. We can exceed the octet rule uh, for that atom. If we put in all the electrons and the octets are not complete, then we start to move lone pairs into bonding positions to make double or triple bonds until we satisfy all the octet rules. And if we have an odd number of electrons, our first step is first layer of handling this is to make sure the more electronegative element has a complete octet. The one that's less electronegative will be uh, having only seven electrons. We do have some common exceptions to the octet rule. Uh, first, the first, second row elements, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, should always uh, satisfy the octet unless there's an odd number of electrons present. And these elements can never exceed the octet rule. So they are strictly limited to the octet rule. The second row elements before these, um, lithium, boron, beryllium, they will have less than eight electrons on them. They do not complete the octet rule. Hydrogen only gets one pair of electrons. This is matching up with helium, which only has one pair of electrons. So hydrogen only gets um, one bonding pair, and that's it. Never any lone pairs, never any double pairs, double bonds. If we have a third row element or a higher, period three, period four, period five, then these can exceed the octet rule. And we'll see some examples of that. So a graphical um, display of the um, rule position. So hydrogen gets only one bonding pair only, a single bond and nothing else in that. Lithium, beryllium, boron, these will get less than an octet. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, these can never exceed the octet. They prefer the octet, but they can never exceed the octet. Then period three, period four, period five, these elements can exceed the octet and get more than eight bonding electrons. So let's look at uh, some structures. So if we're doing phosphate ion, PO4 with the three minus charge. So first we add up our valence electrons. We have 
five for phosphorus, six for each of the oxygens, and then we're adding on three for the charge. So we end up with 32 electrons, 16 pair. And we lay out the atoms. So the first element is normally the central atom. We are going to put in a bonding pair between each of the adjacent atoms. So we use a four pair, we have a total of 16. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we use up all the electrons, we check the octets, and all the octets are complete. So are we good with this? Well, there's another technique that we use to help us decide if this is a good structure. The technique is called formal charge, and it allows us to select the best non-equivalent resonance structure when they are available. And sometimes they are available even when we're not expecting them to be available. So this formal charge process will help us to uh, decide if we need to look for other equivalent structure, other resonance structures. And um, so we'll go through and do a full charge on this. So we'll first calculate our formal charges. And uh, so what we're going to do is um we're going to select take our valence electrons for each atom so we're going to calculate formal charge in each atom so we take the valence electrons of that atom we select off the lone pair electrons which are represented by dots and one half the shared electrons which are represented by dashes so there's one dash for that pair so we can select off uh, valence electrons minus dots minus dashes will give us our formal charge for each atom. The formal charge should add up to the overall charge on the species. So all the oxygens are the same. So for oxygen, oxygen starts off with six valence electrons. We see that there are six dots. So our minus our six dots are non-binding electrons we have one bond one dash we take half the two electrons that gives us one so we take our six dots minus six dash and negative one charge for each of these oxygens so we can show that by each oxygen we should check our phosphorus phosphorus starts off with five valence electrons we have zero dots on the phosphorus we have four dashes so we end up with a plus one and the formal charge is going to equal the overall charge on the species the overall charge is a three minus so we have a plus one four negative ones so they add up three minus but we have this charge separation So if we have both positive and negative charges, we want to look for other structures. And what we're going to do to look for other structures is explore double or triple bonds. So let's do another one here. Put in our charges, our single bonds. I'm gonna make one of these a double bond now. We'll fill in our electrons to get a complete octet everywhere. And this one has one less lone pair. So what we did is we took the lone pair, moved it into the bond to make a double bond. So when we do this, now, our double bond of oxygen. So uh, do a double bond oxygen. We have our six valence electrons minus four dots minus 
two dashes equals a zero. A phosphorus is five valence electrons minus zero dots minus five dashes now. That's also equal to zero. So we still have a minus one, a minus one, and a minus one. But now the double bond oxygen and the phosphorus are both zero. So we no longer have a positive. We have our three negatives, which will add up to the charge. So we need those three negatives there. There's uh, no set spot where we could have put that double bond. So let me do a third structure. Let's put the double bond now on the right. So we have three structures here. The two on the right, all I did was rotate that structure. So there's no functional difference between these two. So these are what are called equivalent resonance structures. But there's a difference in bonds between the left and the two and the right. So these are non-equivalent resonance structures. So the formal charge process cannot say that one equivalent is better than another, but can help us between the non-equivalent. So since these have a lower, lower overall magnitude of charge, we add up the absolute values and we end up with three. Over here, we add up the absolute values and we end up with five. So these numbers are closest to zero overall. So this is our best formal charge structure. So let's look at an, another one here. Nitric acid. So we do the same process on valence electrons are going to be one plus five plus three times six. We have 24 electrons per pair. We lay out the atoms. And the first atom, hydrogen, cannot be a central atom, so the nitrogen is. And this is common for our uh, oxy acids, is that all the oxygens are on the central atom, and the hydrogens are on the oxygens. So we lay out uh, the atoms, we add in the bonding pair between adjacent atoms. So we use up four out of 12 pair. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have stuck in all my electrons. And I don't have a complete octet right now. So I'm going to move one electron um, into a double bond. So this is. Um, we used up all electrons and we don't have complete octet. So we just start moving pairs over to make double or triple bonds.
but in all the other electrons. And let's check the full charge on these two structures. So for a double bonded oxygen, so we have double bond oxygen, oxygen with two bonds, oxygen with two bonds. That would be our six valence electrons minus four dots minus two dashes, four dots, two dashes. So those double bond oxygens are all zero. Our um, single bond oxygen, the six valence electrons minus six dots minus a dash. So we have a negative one charge on this. Now we know that this is a neutral species, so these charges have to add up to zero. So we're going to have a positive charge on there also. Uh, a nitrogen with three bonds. has five valence electrons minus zero dots minus three dashes equals a plus two. Then this nitrogen has four bonds. That'd be five valence electrons minus zero dots minus four dashes is a plus one. Now we have both positive and negative charges. So we check the nitrogen and the nitrogen is in period two. It can never ever exceed the octet rule. So we cannot make any additional bonds to try to reduce uh, the charge separation more. So we know that a double bond on the oxygen will take it down to zero, but that will exceed the octet of nitrogen and that is just not physically possible. So the reason that the phosphorus can exceed the octet rule is that it has d orbitals. So it's a period three element. Uh, so it has three d sublevel. They are unoccupied in the atom itself, but it can take the electrons from the adjacent oxygens in the d orbitals and end up exceeding the octet rule. Nitrogen is in period two, it does not have the D sublevel, so it cannot ever exceed the octet rule. So let's look at a couple more. The tribromide ion. We add up our valence electrons. We have seven for each of the bromines plus one for the charge. So we have 22 electrons with 11 pair. So we put in our bonding pairs, use up two of 11. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Use up 10 pair and we have completed the octet of all the atoms present. So we need to get one more pair of electrons in there somewhere. Well, luckily bromine is a period four element. So it has a D level that allows it to exceed the octet. So in this case, we're just going to squeeze the extra pairs onto the bromine. So we'll make um, three lone pairs around the bromine. So bromine, the central bromine is not exceeding the octet, but it is packing that process. Let's see where that charge ends up. There's a negative one charge somewhere. A single bond of bromine will have seven valence electrons minus six dots minus one dash equals a zero. A double bond of bromine has seven valence electrons minus six dots minus two dashes, and that gives us a negative one. So that bromine, the central bromine contains or carries that negative one charge. Let's look at ozone. 
So we have three times six dense electrons for oxygen, so a total of 18 electrons and nine pair. We put in a bonding pair between each of the oxygens, that's two out of nine pair. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We use up all of our electrons, but the central atom does not have a complete octet. So we're going to steal a pair from one of the end atoms and make a double bond there. So it's a neutral atom. Let's check to see if the formal charge uh, is doing anything. So we have our single bonded oxygens, that's the six balanced electrons, minus six dots, minus one dash, equals a negative one. So this one will have a negative one on it. The double bonded oxygen, six balanced electrons, minus four dots, minus two dashes, is zero. And the central oxygen, which has a total of three bonds on it, I have six balanced electrons minus two dots minus three dashes, and that's a plus one. So oxygen again is a pure two element, does not have the sublevel available to use. So we cannot get rid of this charge separation by doing a double bond. We can have another structure here. So I could have put the double bond on the left, single bond on the right. And I'll put a negative one charge on the right, positive on the center. So these again are resonant structures. And the, I can turn one into the other by rotating around. So that makes them equivalent resonant structures. And when we have equivalent resonant structures, we expect the molecule to resonate between all three all forms. So we're going to oscillate between a single and double bond. So it's going to be somewhere between a single and double bond. The central atom will still have a positive charge. But now the negative will be separated onto two atoms. So that will be a partial negative on those two atoms. So ozone will have negative ends and a positive center on that one. Let's do one more. POCl3. So we calculate our valence electrons, five for phosphorus, six for oxygen, seven for each of the chlorines. So we add them up and we have 22 electrons or 11 pair. We lay out atoms and the first element, phosphorus, we put in the center, we put all the other atoms attached on to it. We put on our bonding electrons. And I didn't add this up right. Sorry about that. Um, 32 electrons. Or 16 pair. So we put in our electrons. And the side atoms, when they're complete, they'll have an octet of electrons, so eight electrons. So I also count by eight, so eight, 16, 24, 32 electrons. I've used up all of my electrons. I have a complete octet and everything. So let me check the charges here. 
formal charges. So chlorine has seven valence electrons minus six dots minus one dash, and that's a zero. The single bond oxygen, six valence electrons minus six dots minus one dash, is a negative one. So we have a negative one up there. This is a neutral atom. We know that's going to be positive. We can calculate it anyway. Phosphorus, five valence electrons minus zero dots minus four dashes is our positive one. So phosphorus is a period three element, so we can exceed the octet. So let's try making a double bond on that oxygen. So we'll put a single bond on each of the chlorine, a double bond on oxygen, put in the rest of our electrons. And our double bond of oxygen has six valence electrons minus four dots minus two dashes, and that's now zero. The phosphorus has five valence electrons minus zero dots minus five dashes, but now also zero. So this has all the zeros. This is our best formal charge structure. So the formal charge process helps us to pick between obviously uh, non-equivalent resonance structures or helps us to recognize that there are additional resonance structures. And we see that charge separation with a period three or higher element.